After a couple of so-so months in game releases, I think things are really going to start to pick up in March, and then heading into the rest of the year, I think it's going to be stacked with epic game releases, and again, you're really starting to see it come together in March. Originally, we were going to see the release of Final Fantasy VII Remake in March as well. That's been delayed until April. I believe Watch Dogs Legion was supposed to come out in March as well. Some games have been pushed back, however, overall, I think the month is still looking very strong, and in today's video, we're highlighting the top 15 games coming in in March of 2020. A lot of games to go over some of them, you're gonna be completely aware about some of them you might not know are coming. We'll try to be as brief as possible, so let's get right into it. And kicking things off, maybe the biggest game release of March, the follow-up to 2016's Doom is Doom Eternal. Hell's armies have invaded Earth, becoming the Slayer in an epic single-player uh, campaign to conquer demons across dimensions and stop the final destruction of humanity. The only thing they fear is you. Doom 2016 was awesome with a great campaign, however, it did falter a little bit from a multiplayer standpoint hopefully with doom eternal they can robust at that element and that really looks to be what Bethesda is doing with uh, Doom Eternal. And there's going to be a lot of quality to the title. Originally, it was supposed to come out late last year. We had to wait a little bit longer, but Doom Eternal will be out March 20th. Next up, we've got a PlayStation 4 exclusive Neo 2 Defy Your Own Mortality and Unleash Your Inner Darkness across the violent feudal land of Sengoku era Japan and the Deadly Dark Realm in the Savage Action RPG sequel. Now, Neo came out all the way back in 2017. Obviously, saw some direct comparisons to the Soul series, and I can definitely see why. You've got that challenging action RPG style of gameplay. Neo has a narrative that's more in your face. It's nothing to write home about. Gameplay was pretty strong. Neo 2 looks to improve the game quite a bit. Been a little while since Neo was originally released, but I think the wait is gonna be worth it. I do think Neo 2 is gonna be a quality title, as it's hitting the PlayStation 4 exclusively on March 13th. Next up, from one PlayStation 4 exclusive to another, Persona 5 Royal will finally be hitting the West March 31st, 2020. This is an incredibly exciting release. Now, I know Persona 5 initially released in 2017. This is just an improved version of that game. However, this isn't just your typical definitive edition or whatever the case may be. No, the Persona re-releases always go to the ultimate extent of adding a lot of content. You saw that with Persona 3 FES, you saw that with Persona 4 Golden, and that is doubly true for Persona 5 Royal, and it's gonna add a lot of new content. Prepare for an all-new RPG experience in Persona 5 Royal, based in the universe of the award-winning series of Persona Dawn, the Mask of the Joker, and join the Phantom Thieves of Hearts. Persona 5 Royal is packed with new characters, confidants, story depth, new locations to explore, and a new grappling hook mechanic for stealthy access to new areas with a new semester at Shujin Academy, get ready to strengthen your abilities in the multiverse and in your daily life. If you played Persona 5, there's reason to go back and play this version as well, and if you never experienced Persona 5, we'll definitely get started with Persona 5 Royal. It's gonna be a phenomenal game. Next up, we have Grand Blue Fantasy Versus. That'll be coming March 3rd, and it will be hitting the PS4 at $59.99, so maybe a little bit pricey, but it does look to be a high-quality fighting game, and Grand Blue Fantasy Versus Power, Skill, and Spirit Collide in a quest to find the true champion of the sky, players can take on AI opponents or fight against human opponents in local or online two-player matches. Obviously, this isn't the Grand Blue Pro uh, Project Relink that a lot of you guys are looking forward to. That's a new JRPG that looks phenomenal. In the case of Grand Blue Fantasy Versus, looks like a very good fighting game, and it will be out as a PS4 exclusive come March 3rd. Next up, we have a VR exclusive title that might be a system seller for a lot of people on VR, exclusively on PC, and that is, of course, course, the return of Half-Life with Half-Life Alex. Half-Life Alex is Valve's VR return to the Half-Life series. It's the story of an impossible fight against a vicious alien race known as the Combine. Set between the events of Half-Life and Half-Life 2, playing as Alex Vance, you are humanity's only chance for survival. As founders of a fledgling resistance, you've continued your clandestine scientific activity, performing critical research and building invaluable tools for the human brave enough to defy the Combine. Every day you learn more about your enemy and every day you work toward finding a weakness. I know that some people are going to be disappointed that it's VR exclusive. However, this is a game that's been built with VR in mind, and it seems like a lot of people seeing the gameplay have been completely enthralled by the game, and they've ended up picking up a VR headset. I think ultimately it's going to be a system seller for VR for a lot 
lot of people, and it will be coming in March of 2020. We don't have an official date, but it is shaping up to be one of the biggest game releases of the year, and I don't think it's hyperbole in saying that, even though it's a VR exclusive title. Next up, one of the most popular anime is making the transition to gaming once again, and that is One Piece with One Piece Pirate Warriors 4. Now, traditionally speaking, anime games are usually a little bit of a mi uh, mixed bag, but One Piece Pirate Warriors has been a rather well-received franchise, and Pirate Warriors 3 in particular was really well-received, getting a 74 on Metacritic, and most One Piece fans really enjoy enjoying the game. Now, obviously, if you're getting into a game like this, you probably want to be a fan of One Piece. You're not getting into One Piece Pirate Warriors just to experience the story of One Piece or anything like that, but if you're a fan, you're going to enjoy the title as most have with the previous Pirate Warriors titles as well. Next up, a brand new horror game hits the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One next month as Moons of Madness will be making the transition from PC to consoles. Moons of Madness was initially released on PC back in October of 2019. Pretty well received over there, a first-person story-driven cosmic horror game where the scientific exploration of Mars meets the supernatural dread of Lovecraft definitely has some psychological elements to it. Was pretty well received on PC by the community that played it. 69 on Metacritic, but mostly popular positive reception on Steam with 77% of the 783 user reviews being positive. If you're a fan of horror games with a psychological twist to it, I think Moods of Madness is going to be right up your alley, and it will be coming to PS4 and Xbox One on March 24th, so there you have it on that for you horror fans out there. Transitioning back to anime, Tecmo Koei and Gus have announced a fairy tale RPG for PlayStation 4, Nintendo Switch, and PC, and that'll be due out in March as well. Demons, Dark Wizards, Dragons, and Cats players will find it all as they start your journey at the land of Fior and fairy tale wizards play through the adventures of Natsu Dragneel and Lucy Hartfilia, as well as the other eccentric members of the fairy tale mage guild. Obviously, one of the most popular anime, not quite at the level of a One Piece, but definitely has its own audience and a very popular uh, franchise in its own right. And to see it make the transition to the gaming realm in the form of an RPG, which is rather interesting, it will be pretty exciting to the people that are big fans. Fairy tale drops on March 19th. Next up a major, major Nintendo Switch exclusive. Animal Crossing is making a comeback with Animal Crossing New Horizon. As in previous installments in the Animal Crossing series, New Horizon is a non-linear life simulation game played in real time. You assume the role of a customizable character who moves to a deserted island after purchasing a vacation package, and you proceed in an open-ended fashion where you're going to be doing a lot of things with a ton of variety. New Horizon will support both local and online cooperative gameplay with up to four players locally and eight players online able to occupy an island at any given time. This is definitely going to be one of the bigger Nintendo Switch releases of the year, and it will be dropping on March 20th. Next up, another anime title, My Hero 1's Justice 2, will be dropping on March 13th. Now, I had to include this on the list as a big My Hero Academia fan. My Hero 1's Justice was definitely a game that I personally enjoyed. However, I can concede the fact that it wasn't a perfect fighting game. And again, with these anime titles, if you're not a fan of the IP, you're probably not going to enjoy the game as much. My Hero 1 Justice 2's revamp story mode picks up from the ending of the first title and along with new characters my hero one's justice 2 will also uh, include a brand new feature sidekick plus ultra sidekicks can now execute their plus ultra attack while in battle so players must choose their teams carefully to make each uh, attack count reminds me a little bit of the gameplay from the naruto storm series and that's definitely something i can get behind my hero one's justice 2 will be hitting the playstation 4 xbox one nintendo switch and pc on march 13th next up here's a major, major release on Xbox One and PC, Ori and the Will of the Wisp from the creators of Ori and the Blind Forest. The acclaimed adventure game with more than 50 awards and nomination comes the highly anticipated sequel, Ori and the Will of the Wisp. Ori and the Blind Forest was a tremendous game that a lot of people enjoyed. It's one of the best uh, received downloadable titles in history. And now after a long wait, we are finally getting Ori and the Will of the Wisp. To give you guys an idea, the Blind Forest came out all the way back in 2016, so it's been four years, but this this game looks just as good visually. It's a gorgeous game. Expect some great platforming, expect some great action, and a great story to go along with it. Ori and the Blind Forest was one of the more emotional games you could play, and Will of the Wisp, I'm sure, will be a lot more of that. Ori and the Will of the Wisp hits Xbox One and PC on March 11th for $29.99, so a pretty good price as well. 
Next up, speaking of Xbox One and PC exclusives at $29.99, we have Bleeding Edge. Now, Bleeding Edge is a game that when I initially saw it, I wasn't completely sold on. Microsoft had acquired Ninja Theory, and the first game that they were going to be putting out is Bleeding Edge. Then we also got the announcement of Hellblade 2, so whatever. If Ninja Theory wants to try something a little bit different, in the meantime, by all means, knock yourself out, and that's exactly what they're doing with Bleeding Edge. Grab your team and tear it up in Bleeding Edge, an electrifying online brawler where every fighter comes mechanically enhanced for mayhem. Choose your fighter from a diverse cast of colorful characters from the edges of society. Burn Rubber as bold and beautiful a Buttercup with her detachable saw blade arms. Wreck Havoc as black metal rocker uh, with his electrifying guitar solos. Or slash it up on the streets. New York's most wanted assassin. Join the multiplayer fray. Bleeding Edge will be dropping March 24th. And again, at a $29.99 price point, a little bit more palatable of a pickup. Next up, we have a PC exclusive that looks rather interesting, and that is Iron Danger. Iron Danger is a tactical combat game with a unique time manipulation mechanic, a never-before-seen combination that combines the tactical depth of turn-based games with the exciting action of real-time games. It's got a pretty cool steampunk setting as well, and hopefully it turns out well and it does make the transition to other platforms in the future. Iron Danger drops on March 25th. Next up, a major game making the transition to the Nintendo Switch is The Outer Worlds. That'll be out in March, and The Outer Worlds, of course, a brand new sci-fi single-player RPG done by Obsidian. Great to see that they will be able to bring this game over to the Switch, but it's not like Outer Worlds was this technical juggernaut. However, I do offer you the fact that Outer Worlds had a great art style, and that should make a quality transition to the Nintendo Switch. It's a great game. We already know it's a great game, and having it on the go and having it on a Nintendo platform, that's going to make it just as good, if not a little bit better even, dare I say. And lastly, let's end this with one of my favorite franchises, The Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3 makes its way over to PC. It was a little bit unfortunate that it was initially a PlayStation 4 exclusive, but that'll be remedied in March as the third game in the Trails of Cold Steel franchise will be arriving to PC. Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2 are already available. Tremendous JRPGs with some of the best storytelling and character development I've ever seen in a game. Not necessarily just in a JRPG. You can compare it to any other style of RPG. The storytelling, world building, character development in Legend of Heroes is top notch and it's done really, really well in Trails of Cold Steel. Do be warned that the Legend of Heroes franchise is an expansive franchise and getting into it is a little bit difficult. You've got so many games that cross over and the games themselves are rather lengthy as well, but they feature epic storytelling and Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel 3 will be out on PC come March 23rd, so be excited for that. So there you have it. March is bringing with it a ton of compelling new game releases and a lot of major releases with Doom Eternal, Neo 2, Persona 5, Royal Half-Life Alex. There are some major, major games coming in March, but it's also rounded out by some other smaller titles that could be good. A game like Iron Danger, a game like Ori and the uh, Will of the Wisps. And that's going to be really good. And a lot of the anime games as well. Hopefully they turn out well and hopefully they're good for fans of the IPs. That's going to conclude this video. Sound off with all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching and goodbye. Hey guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, make sure to hit the subscribe button, and if you're already subscribed, do us a favor and hit the bell icon. This way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. That's the best way to keep up with all of our uploads, and we usually try to upload two videos a day. And with the bell icon hit, you'll be notified whenever we do upload a video. As always, thanks for watching.